activities that we adopt here focus very specifically on the condition of Parkinson's. So we, we're using activities, both singing and rhythm activities, that aim to stimulate uh, movement uh, initiation, movement regulation, um, and the, the physical elements that we understand about uh, Parkinson's. People with Parkinson's particularly have difficulty there, they have loss of muscle tone. So we work on those very specific issues. We work on articulation, all the muscles around uh, voice, around breathing, um, and, and then muscles, the intercostal muscles, and all those muscles that support diaphragmatic activity. <laughs> I thought it would be a good idea for my husband because he suffers from Parkinson's and one of the early signs of Parkinson's is that he used to go to church and sing and he couldn't sing anymore and um, he was having trouble speaking and formulating his words and we thought we'd go along to see what the singing group would offer and um, since doing it it's helped him, it helped his voice develop and I feel a little bit more that he can talk because that is one of the early signs and continues to deteriorate if you don't use the voice. Coming to this group, I can blend in with the others and I feel good. I always go out really, it's done me very good, you know, because um, I've recently lost my husband, so this is a lovely um, thing that I can do. And I, I can take the rhythm home with me and sort of sing and do the actions. <laughs> I've got a tambourine now. <laughs> posture because I'm starting to slump and slooch along the floor but I always go out and for the first few days I remember my posture and my breathing and so it really it really does help um, as I say I go out uplifted I feel better I walk straighter you know my neighbor commented last time I went home and said oh you're walking good you know <laughs> come come the next time I wish it was on every week actually <laughs> I come because I enjoy it principally, but I also come in the expectation and an anticipation of it doing me good, of improving my defective articulation, of improving my breathing, improving my pitch of voice, which tends to be monotonous, and uh, when I sing it goes flat. I hope of improving all those things. And of course it's a pleasure to meet other people. There is evidence that the activities um, can support people in such a way that they might need uh, fewer GP visits, they, their condition might remain stable for longer, and certainly in, in terms of social um, and psychological health, uh, uh, they're, they're likely to be supported in, and perhaps um, experience less of a degree of depression and anxiety, and those sorts of conditions that, that take up a lot of NHS time and resources. Um, so I think that there's the growing evidence and I think there's a growing interest and that would be our long-term goal really to work very closely with at a central level and have these uh, sorts of activities supported um, through, through the government. No matter how aware you are of your own inadequacies in performance, you can see that other people are having the same difficulties and forgiving. And if you stand away from it, it makes a remarkably good noise. It's like that song, if you're inclined to be critical, you'll like it more the further off you stand. My husband always feels very uplifted when he's finished singing in a group and I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Since my husband died, I've really de deteriorated because there's nobody to sort of keep me going. But this is a, a lifeline that as I stop and think, ah, oh, breathe and stand and, you know, it's a, um, well, as I said, just say, it's a lifeline for me, really, it is. You know. <laughs> Bye.